Hey guys, I just wanted to do a short list of the tools we're going to need to install this Vorsprung coil kit. This is going to be for a Fox 36. Um, so the same for pretty much all the forks, Zeb or whatever other fork you end up going with. Um, you're going to need a heat gun. I uh, don't need that Chris King headset, but I highly recommend it. I've had them in every one of my bikes and never had a single problem. You're going to need a metric Allen key set. I've got metric and standard here. Micrometer. Some kind of short or sharp knife. It's a 12 mil socket with an extension. 3 8 You're going to need a chamferless 32 mil for the Fox forks. The Zebs might be 28. I'm not sure. You're going to need a 22 mil and a 14 mil cone wrench. And then a 12 mil open wrench. Um, and then a torque wrench of some kind. This is a Venzo Newton meters. Um, everything in the manual is going to refer to inch pounds, but it's a very easy to do a conversion um, with Google. Syringe and then some kind of oil. They recommend 20. I'm actually going with 10 weight. And then you can use the Slick Honey. I'm just using Push's SOS Screech, which is the same thing pretty much. Um, one thing interesting about this kit is it's using 110 milliliters of oil on the coil side. The push kit, which I have in my other bike, has only got 20 milliliters, so that's a massive difference. Reminds me of like the old Marzocchi bomber forks. And then a, a beer always helps too, right? All right, let's get into this. So this is my 2022 Santa Cruz Heckler. It's <clears throat> the S version, so it's one up from the bottom of the line. This is what we're going to be putting the Vorsprung coil kit in. It came with a lower end Fox 36, which I don't care. It's going to be fine with the coil in it. And then as soon as Cascade Components comes out with their rear link, I'll be running that with a longer stroke coil in the back. So it should balance out pretty sweet. All right, guys. So <clears throat> once you open the box, this is what you're going to find inside the components. <clears throat> Obviously the coil spring. I went with the 55 pound. It was kind of borderline. I could have done a 60, but I'd rather have it be a little on, more on the compliant side. Um, the coil spring perch. The heat shrink that we're going to put on the coil spring just helps with dampening the noise while it's getting squished inside of the stanchion. An extra piece for the Fox 36. Um, and then we've got the smash pot, the inner tube assembly, and then the outer tube assembly. So these two pieces go together. We're obviously gonna get into that in detail. And then the, the top cap, the actual smash pot top cap. Um, really cool system. And there is adjustment here. The way this works is it gets down towards the bottom of the stroke. <clears throat> There's, they've developed a system that helps with bottoming. Because the coil's so linear, you know, that's, that can be a problem is it just, you blow through all your travel and bottom out harsh. But what you give up in small bump compliancy to me is just not worth it. I was going to buy a Marzocchi Z1 bomber for it, but this kit was 350 bucks, which is about half of what one of those forks run. And I've run the push ACS in my other Fox 36 and it made a world of difference. So. We'll go ahead and, uh, and, and get into the, the process of how this all goes together. These little spacers are what let you configure it for the travel. So they're 10 millimeter each. So my fork's currently 160, so I need 20 mil. So I'll be keeping two of these on and getting rid of the others. But you can go all the way up to 180 millimeters with this kit if you have like a 38, which is probably eventually what I'm gonna end up with. All right, let's get started. Okay guys, so <clears throat> we've got the inner tube assembly and the outer tube assembly. Um, we're going to take off the, this is the collar for the spring, actual coil spring. Get that, take that off. And then we've got our seal head, which is set aside for now. And then we've got all of our top out spacers. And they're 10 millimeter increments each. I know that for one my 160 mil, they, they give you a table, obviously. I need two of these. So I need 20 millimeters. So I'm gonna just set the three other three aside. 
and then basically slide our seal head back on and then we're going to insert this into our outer tube assembly and I'm actually going to grab some of the SOS grease real quick and put on the threads of the seal head even though it doesn't say you definitely don't want not supposed to use Loctite but I noticed threading it in the other day it was I think a tad of grease won't hurt anything so let me grab that real quick this is or like honey butter or anything like that would totally do the trick too it doesn't take much and now on these guys they're slotted so if you just give them a little pinch they'll slide down into that outer tube assembly I'm trying to keep my uh fat fingers out of the way here come wrench might even help yeah it's a really tight fit we can use our 14 to get this going So now we've got that and then basically now we're going to use the 22 mil cone wrench and the 14 and we need to torque it to 75 inch pounds and again there's no lock time on any of this stuff so I kind of put a little made my own little mechanism that fits into one of the spanner of the spanners here that's going to let me torque it. But again, I'm on Newton meters, so 75 inch pounds is roughly, I believe it was just a hair. It was like 8.43 Newton meters. So that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, let me take a quick beer check. One sec. All right, sorry about that, guys. A little bear check real quick. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. Uh, so this, what I ended up doing is that's just a 3 8 extension. It fits perfectly in the, the 14 mil cone wrench. And then it, it is, it needs to get torqued to 75 inch pounds, the seal head. But I'm just, again, Newton meters, it's 8.4. So I set it to that. And that's, that's, it's literally there. It's pretty much just hand tight. So that works out, done with that. Next step is heat shrinking. So let me grab my heat gun and get that together and then we'll go through that. All right, next up is uh, they give you this piece of heat shrink tubing. You're gonna need a heat gun. If you don't own one of these, it's they're super cheap and I can't think of how many times I've used it for automotive or bicycle projects. But <clears throat> real quick, basically, <clears throat> so inner shaft's installed, but once we get the sh heat shrink installed, <clears throat> right now it's, it, they sent it to you a little bit longer in case you're running like the 180 length. So I'm gonna, what the, it's going to make life easier right now to cut this down so that when it's shrunken down, because what we have to do is come in with an X-Acto knife and basically trim it later. So <clears throat> it's, it's way too long now and you have to bottom this shaft out. If I shrink it down now, it's going to cover the threads. It's just going to make it all more difficult. So I'm going to end up cutting off probably about 30 or 40 millimeters right now. I'm going to do a quick measurement. And then uh and then we'll come back okay guys so i just you can see the piece that what i ended up cutting and getting rid of <clears throat> and basically when we shrink it we want to make sure it doesn't cover these ports here okay so we're going to get as close to that as we can and then on this end the inner tube is going to be bottomed out and then we're going to come here and score it right next to the ceiling head the, the bushing here right on the edge there so by cutting that now it's just it's just gonna make life easier you'll see why in a sec but basically just gonna do that and then turn this puppy on Just 
got to be careful with this. Definitely generates a lot of heat. Definitely can very easily melt stuff depending on what you're working with. The main thing is just to keep keep turning whatever it is that <clears throat> that sealing head. The seal head itself has got. I notice it's got some kind of a bushing in there, much like a, on a stanchion tube on your fork. And so I'm sure that it's if you stay on it too long you're probably going to melt whatever that is and then now you're no longer going to hold liquid so you can see this is sealed up pretty tight so far it's going to hit it a few more times here Should be good. All right. I'm gonna grab an exacto knife and we'll do that's the next step. All right, so I let that cool down just a little bit. It was it was too hot to touch. It's still a little warm, but then so you can see you can move that inner tube still. You basically want to bottom it out and then use either a razor knife or I'm using an exacto knife and you want to come in here and this is a fresh blade, so this should cut fairly easily. Ideally, you don't want to score the tube, the tube itself, if you can. Um, I don't think it make, it's going to make a big difference unless you're using something really dull. So, let's see if I can get that off of there. I had a nice clean edge and I just kind of screwed it up. Yeah, this material is really thick, so it's definitely, I'm surprised. I thought the X-Acto knife would cut through it a lot easier. Yeah. Alright, so I clean that up as best I can. You basically want to get that even with the end of the seal head. I actually would have preferred if it was overlapping a little bit there. But at the end of the day, I think I don't think it matters. It's going to be fine. Um, and so now the next thing we need to do is uh, <clears throat> we've got to install our main spring spacers on the outer tube. And so for 160 mil travel, I need 30 millimeters of spacers. So they give you these spacers here. So this is a 10 and then that's a 20 overall. I don't know if you can see that, but 30 millimeters. And those just slide over this onto here. And then you've got the next thing we've got is the spring itself. And then it comes with this spring perch. And you basically, if you just put it on either end of the coil spring, you'll notice that it it you typically fits one end better than the other. This one really is hard to tell, but this does feel a little bit better. So that's gonna be the end that ends up going on. That, that'll be at the top of the fork. Um, and then the next step is shrinking this red, the heat shrink tubing down. I believe it's 100 millimeters from the end of the, the coil spring itself. And that's just so as it's compressing inside of the stanchion, this is a damper. It's going to just keep this, the noise down so you don't hear the spring hitting like metal to metal. So let me do a quick measurement on that and then we'll proceed with that.
All right, yeah, so the it needs to be 100 millimeters from the top of the spring, always take into account that, that little wrap that's at the top of the, the spring, right? That little overlap, that's where I'm measuring from. This isn't rock and scientist, but basically 100 millimeters is four inches. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start hitting this with some heat. Remember, you just don't want to stay in one area or you're just going to burn a hole in it. And it was a lot of heat coming out of here. It's not like a hair dryer. Okay, so I'm going to let that cool down for a sec. And then I believe on the 36, I'm not sure for whatever reason, maybe because the stanchions are bigger inside, they give you another piece that you center over this just for extra damping. So once this is cool, we'll do that. Okay guys, next step, install the coil on the assembly. Um, I went ahead and slid, slid that little extra section of heat shrink over, but I haven't hit it yet. I'm gonna wait till later. Um, so we've got the, the spring collar, the, the, the perch, which we know this is the, the top because we measured it, remember, 100 millimeters from the top here. So <clears throat> we're just gonna basically, we've got our spacers on here for 160. We're gonna just slide this over. You can turn upside down and drop that out. And then <clears throat> two mil Allen key. This is probably hard to see. I'll do my best. But a two mil Allen key will fit in there. That'll keep the shaft from rotating. And then, of course, make sure you, you don't forget your, your spring perch. And then the spring collar threads onto that. And that two mil Allen key helps keep the shaft from rotating while you just snug this up finger tight. And then this is where we're going to use that 12 mil open end wrench to, to set preload. And so I'm just hand twisting this right now. And basically what we're looking for. So I set this to the, the range on the thread that's showing here needs to be between eight minimum and 10 maximum. So I'm going dead center nine mil. So, I'm just going to keep tightening this. If you have that, like I just did right now, make sure that that Allen wrench is only poking out and not going all the way through. Otherwise, at some point as you tighten this, you're going to bend the Allen key because the coil spring is compressing against it, if that makes sense. So right now we are, oh, let's shut off. I don't even know they don't need the wrench got to have enough preload on this so that the spring's not rattling around so that right there is perfect literally nine millimeters give it another little bit yeah so we can pull this guy out it's under a little bit of tension because it got pinched Let's see if that changed anything. No, we're still fine. And then I would just do that. I'm just checking to make sure that the spring isn't actually loose and rattling. If it was, they give you a couple of these little spacers that you can throw under here, underneath, in between this 10 mil, the, the 10 mil spacer, which is this first one. This is 20, this is 10. So that'll just add some thickness and then still let you achieve that measurement you need here, which is between eight and 10. Um, but, and just it's just gonna space the spring up more, but I don't feel any movement here. I think we're solid. Um, so gonna move on to the next step. All right, next step, we take the top cap, the smash pot top cap, uh, for the life of me, I don't know why they chose to not stick with the same size the Fox was because those chamferless sockets, the 32mm sockets aren't inexpensive. 
this appears to be like a 28, which is must probably is what Rock Shock's using. So I don't have the right chamfer for the socket, so I'm using a adjustable spanner with a lock. And then you just take this top cap adapter, and we've got to torque it to 45 inch pounds. Got my torque wrench set. It's 12 mil. Again, very little, doesn't take much. Um, so that's good to go. And then this is just gonna thread on to the top of our coil spring assembly. Look at that. I'm getting close. All right, pretty much uh, we're getting close to the end here. So we got our 12 mil open end here at the top of the spring collar. And then since I don't have a chamferless socket, whatever this probably is, a 28, I can't use my torque wrench. This is basically needs to be torqued to 45 inch pounds, which is what we just did with top cap assembly, which is just hand tight. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing it by hand. It says to make sure you don't exceed that. So pretty lame that they don't list that in the instructions as one of the tools required. Um, up to this, I've, everything's been the spec, but again, I'm confident that that just that hand tight is fine. So, and then the last thing is we hit this heat shrink tube, the center section and, and, uh, Pretty sweet. Psyched to ride this tomorrow. Hitting pipeline, Toro Park, probably do Marks Ridge too. Uh, but we're not done yet. So this is the assembly is complete. Now we're gonna get into the fork and show you how to install. I'll take the fork apart and install this. All right, got the fork off the bike. I'm gonna take the top cap off here. Depressurize this. side take our 32 mil chamferless socket Ooh, this thing is really on there All right, after it's depressurized, we take our 32 mil chamferless socket. Got our volume spacers in there. Go ahead and set those aside. All right, next we're gonna, we need to separate the lowers from the uppers. So we take our rebound cap off, two millimeter Allen key, <clears throat> take off the little red adjuster knob, set that aside. And you're gonna need a 15 mil socket. I'm still using just all three eight stuff. You want to break this loose about two full turns. All right, and we're just leaving that gap there because we're going to shwack that with the hammer to pop that seal. The other one 
other side is a 10 mil. Both of these are going to have crest washers on them, which may or may not fall right off. Looks like these probably won't come off till I give it a schwack. I got a five gallon bucket here. We're definitely going to want something to catch all the oil once we we pull those apart. So I'm just going to take our 15. Did that. Give this a shwack. Oh, there we go. All right, you can see there's some fluid draining out of there. Let me reposition the camera and we'll go ahead and take this apart. Alright guys, so once that 15 mil nuts off, the lower should just slide off. There we go. Just set those in there for now. So this fork's got, I think, 350 miles on it. So, pretty new. I'm not, obviously not replacing seals or nothing. It's super clean. Um, so let's get ready for the next step all right so next we got to get this snap ring out this I've used in the past I've used a dental pick but I think I can make this jeweler's screwdriver work yep there we go set that aside and then let's move the camera back here I'm gonna just pull out our air shaft assembly a little bit of pressure that's pretty normal it's probably gonna be watch your uh, your bucket here this is gonna be a bunch of honey butter or whatever they uh, they pack it there and we're gonna set that aside won't be using that anytime again in the near future that I foresee, but we'll hold on to it anyway. All right. Let me reposition here. Next step. Okay, guys. So getting ready to put, we're going to put the lowers back on and then put the install the actual coil itself. So. <clears throat> I just put a light film of that SOS grease on these bushings. Um, they're super clean. I looked inside of them. All right. So that came out the bottom on that side for our rebound. I'm going to go ahead and just put the crush washer and that nut back on that side. Um, that'll just kind of hold things together when we're when we're installing the coil spring. Got to be really careful that the bottom of that the needle doesn't get damaged. I'll show you in a minute the adjuster, but it's really tiny. If you were to just like drop the whole assembly into the leg, you could definitely damage something. So here's our completed coil assembly. I'm just gonna take a bunch of SOS lube or if you've got whatever you're using, Slick Honey, and just totally coat this down. It's just gonna help with noise. And this version of 36, these newer ones, the internal stanchions are bigger than previous versions. This is a 2022 and so, I mean, it's going to, in theory, hopefully have less contact. Um, 
I've never noticed any noise on like my push ACS kit on my other Fox 36. I've never noticed. I've heard people complain about the noise. I've never noticed it. So we've got that lubed up pretty good. And then we're going to just lower this down. And this is what I'm talking about being careful with. You do not want to just drop that in here. Yep. Yep. She's out the bottom. Let me grab uh, the right socket to fit this and then we'll tight torque that to spec. All right, so as I mentioned, I don't have whatever this is. It's probably a 28 mil chamferless socket. So I'm using an adjustable spanner with a like a lockdown. It's almost like a vice grip. Just, I don't like not having the right tool. I will definitely get a 28 mil chamferless socket at some point. They're saying to torque this down to 220 inch pounds. Basically, I'm just going to tighten it as snug as I can get it. The socket's just safer too that this doesn't slip and you go gouging your fork. So that's snug. It's not going anywhere. Um, so one thing that I did find interesting in the instructions is now it's telling you to add the oil, which normally we'd invert and put in through the bottom of the lower legs, but we've already got our assemblies coming out the bottom. But on these new Fox 36s, or all and the 38s, we've got these guys, the, the pressure equalizers. If you unscrew these, you, that's instant hole right into the stanchions. So. I have absolutely no idea why that would not work. Um, sorry, I had the camera up too high there. I'm talking about these guys right here. So I'm gonna just pop those out with a five mil, shine a light in there, should see the inside of the stanchions. And 20 mil is typical on these, on each side, 20 mil, milliliters. I'm using a uh, 10 weight, they recommend 20. But on the Smashbot conversion, there you're doing 110 milliliters, which is you know five times what Fox normally puts in there, which I like. That's a lot of oil. That's going to help with the valving, and their whole their whole system's based on that last bit of travel. You know they've got an adjustment knob that helps prevent it from bottoming out. So let me grab a syringe and some oil, and we'll do that. All right, and we've got the crush washer on here. I'm just going to tighten that up and we've got to put our little rebound knob adjuster back on there. Remember that's a two mil. To find that flat spot. You can see it where the dimple is where that set screw was on before. Just snug that up. Make sure it's clicking. Yeah. Then we're going to take the new crush washer and nut that came with the smash pot kit. I'm going to tighten that up. All right, so we're going to add 20 mil to this side, which is the rebound and compression side of the leg. All right, guys, so that didn't work. Uh, there's just no way to get that much oil in through those the equalizers on the the lower legs on the rebound side no problem but it was just for whatever reason f just overflowing so i had to put the fender back on because the fender uses those equalizer valves that's part of the mounting system and it's got those have o-rings on there so that way i could re-invert the fork i had to loosen the top cap push this back through and then I'm just about done. I got 10 more milliliters and then we'll, uh, we'll collapse the fork and put the foot nut back on. All right, so we got the foot nut and crush washer back on. This is tightened down and torqued to spec. All we gotta do is uh, reinstall the little adjuster cap with the 1.5 mil 
and we're good to go. Slap this back on the bike. I did buy a new Chris King headset, one of the drop set threes. I've had them on every bike since the 90s, zero issues, totally worth the money. Uh, I'm not going to go through that setup, but just uh, if a lot of you don't have the right tool to put the race on, I just made this for some, from some PVC, it works like a charm, fits perfectly over, and then you just take your hammer, give it a couple schwacks, and you seat that race on there. And the rest of the, the bearings just press in, so super simple. Well, I've had a chance to put about 200 miles on the Fox 36 with that smash pot coil conversion kit. Made a huge difference. Um, been using this as the start of pipeline trail, and I've been using this as a baseline. My last, the first five runs I did out here on it were all like 10 to 15 seconds faster than any run I've ever done on pipeline on any of my bikes. So it definitely made a difference. Um, super plush, zero complaints, had no issues with it. Um, you might be able to see something new in the back here. I've got a coil for the first time out here today with some prototype links from Cascade Components. Jimmy, friend over there, has let me try it out. So should be out soon. Let you run a 230 by 65 stroke shock. So you get 10, more, 10 millimeters more traveling back. I'll do a separate video on that for sure and show the installation and just give you a rundown on performance. But uh, yeah, stay tuned and uh, subscribe if you like. Thanks.